so we break things down to why are you here listening to this rant why would you the individual want to listen to a 25 year old trainer based in new york just talk about workout related things you tell me maybe you're a trainer as well who wants to get that alternative perspective from things that i like to talk about Maybe you're someone from the outside world looking into the fitness world and want to get some two cents about what it's like, what's the concept, what's the thinking like. Or maybe you're just bored and you're just cooking something to eat or you're folding laundry or whatever the hell you're doing. You're trying to find a way to entertain yourself and boom, here we are. My name is Corey Taylor Vega and we're going to be talking about the core related workouts and what is makes them so significant and how you could get the most out of your core. So with the core, I would definitely say that you got to really care about your core, regardless of if you want to be David Hasselhoffing across the beach or you want to have like some washboard abs like David Hasselhoff across the street or you just want to have your abs look as good as David Hasselhoff when he's walking across the beach. When it comes to these related workouts, I would definitely say that my biggest takeaway, the biggest hint that I could give to you that you're not really going to find anywhere else is to work out your core first. When you're doing strength training or you're trying to lose weights or you're trying to tone up a little bit, I would definitely recommend putting the core first because if you think of it from a logistic standpoint as far as your entire workout, Your core is connected to everything else. It's the epicenter of the body. It's connected to the arms, the limbs. It's connected to the legs, the knees. It's all a unit. It's like a domino effect. One relates to the other in a way, shape, or form. And the part where it benefits the most is because think about it like this. If you're doing shoulder presses and you're just shoulder pressing your life away to take the weight off your shoulders to get that bulge, the boulder biceps thing looking whatever reason it is and you want to start hitting core you have hanging leg raises out the window you have captain's chair out the window you have planks out the window so if you are someone who has your rhythm and really likes the way you do it then throwing that off is gonna like not give you the most out of your workout you're not gonna feel as satisfied it's like you're playing a song you hit one note wrong The song gets through, but hey, you look at that error. You look at where you messed up. And the same applies for legs, whether you're doing squats, whether you're doing hamstring curls, and you want to do leg raises, butterfly kicks, flutter kicks, scissor kicks, incline scissor kicks. Boom, that's out the window because you did legs before it. So if abs is that masterpiece that you want to work on, if that's your end goal, you keep the options open to to giving you the ability to target the obliques to target the upper abs, to target the lower abs. You keep that window of opportunity open and clean. So take that, take away from here, put it in your pocket, I don't know, write it down, put it in your notes, put it in your workout plan. However you want to do it, just try that out. If the core is your goal, then do it first before anything else because then everything else comes pretty smooth. And I promise you this, like when you're doing your workouts after your core, you're going to be feeling your core super sensitive. It's going to be feeling way more engaged than it normally is in your workouts because it's bracing. It's loading the weight from whatever workout it is you're doing, and it's going to be super sensitive. So you're just going to be like, oh, man, like I'm beating the crap out of my core. And you most definitely are, man. Like as long as you're pushing yourself, as long as you're giving yourself 110 percent, as long as you're targeting all the areas you need to and using proper range of motion, proper form, proper reps, you're not going easy on yourself, you're not having a conversation as you're doing your reps, you should be golden. The core is also super important because of the fact that you got to worry about your frame. That goes to the point where I was talking about earlier about loading weight. When you're doing a pull-up, you've seen people curl up into a ball as you're doing a pull-up. Why? Because they might not have the core muscles to hold them up. When you see people deadlifting, you know you don't you see it being used but at the same time you don't see it and that's a funny tricky thing because when you see them coming up from a deadlift you see their legs moving you see their torso moving but you don't see their core moving because of course the core wouldn't be moving as much it's not like a squeeze it's opening up and the part that it's like makes it the unsung hero is the fact that even though it's being used you don't really notice it but it is loading weight when you're doing a deadlift when you're doing a squat You're holding your frame up to stop it from dropping in. So it's like you're getting an army. You have an army of people backing you up, and the army is each individual muscle. Each individual muscle should be able to hold its own. 
you're not you're only as strong as your weakest link which goes back to the point of everything is a domino effect if one part of your body is not holding up its own in a workout everything else is pretty much doom you're going to be not getting the most out of your workouts you're going to be feeling it in that weaker part of the body as opposed to the part that you're trying to target so that core is like that person that you need because it's in the whole epicenter of the body your organs care about your organs man eat right make smart choices eat your vegetables brush your teeth i don't know that hell how it helps your organs but when you smile about your organs you'll have nice white teeth go figure so like look at the brain look what do you have holding the brain protecting the brain you have skin which does only so much hair some of us and you have the skull which protects it yeah bone does a lot but it doesn't cover everything and when you look at the midsection where most of your organs are the heart stomach the intestines the kidneys the liver those are pretty much exposed because your ribs only cover a good amount of it and then everything else is out in the open you get uh you know god forbid anything happens to you where you're punctured through the skin and you want it and it's going to be reaching towards an organ what do you have to protect yourself you can't dictate how much thick skin you have literally yeah figuratively i grew up with thick skin i grew up with a bunch of siblings in new york and you know they they roasted me and i'm bigger and stronger for it but besides that like you cannot dictate how thick your skin is you cannot dictate how strong your organs are in a resilient standpoint but you can dictate how much body fat you keep you can dictate how much muscle you have so you're reinforcing that wall between your organs and your whatever the hell happens for uh, you know let's uh, knock on wood if I could find some wood. Boom. You want to have that protected. Case in point. Just that's the one thing you can dictate. That's the game changer. That's the one thing that people that it's going to make the difference between getting all the way through to the organ and not. And then the last point would definitely be for anyone, regardless if you're working out core, but you definitely feel it in the core. Work out with an empty stomach. Work, don't eat at least three to four hours and it really becomes a fine line between what you're eating if you're eating in quantity or you're eating very light nuts and berries yeah that time frame is a lot smaller but it is usually good to not eat at least three hours or so before you work out because of the fact that when you're working out and you're pushing your weights you feel groggy with a full stomach you feel kind of sluggish especially depending on what you eat you feel sluggish you don't feel at 100 percent. you feel nauseous when you're working out so Working out with an empty stomach is going to be a good tip to have, too. Like, you're going to be coming out. And I promise you this. I don't know if it's just me. This is something that I didn't really ask so many people. But I know for a fact it's for me. When you're hungry, but you start working out, you be you forget that you're hungry. You get so in the zone about what you're doing. You get so in the zone about your workout routine, your regimen, that, like, you just want to get more done out of it. Like, you feel like nothing is holding you back like the food that you ate. So make sure that you have an empty stomach before you work out or eat something very light, something uh, liquidy or not too uh, or not too much with not too much liquid, like a yogurt parfait, whatever the case is, whatever is going to help you. If you haven't had a snack in over a certain amount of hours and you have a short time frame, definitely make it light. And uh, yeah, this message has been brought to you by absolutely no one. Fuck off. Don't touch my audience. Cue the guitar strings. Cue me talking about raising plants and animals with a cowboy hat on. Nah, I'm fucking with you. It's New York. It's Taylor Made. Uh, have a good one, guys. Be easy. And remember, only fans of mine follow the links provided.